special meeting. Roll call for the special meeting. Council Member Strayman? Here. Friedman? Here. Najarian? Here. Weaver? Here. Mayor Quintero? Here. And we have your report. Agenda for the January 26, 2010 special meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, January 21, 2010 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Before you is a City Manager regarding consideration of federal appropriation requests for fiscal year 2010. Two A's motion establishing and prioritizing federal appropriation funding requests for the fiscal year 2011. And two B's motion selecting delegate or delegates to represent the City of Glendale during the upcoming legislative trip to Washington, D.C. Mr. Starberg. Yes, let me go to John Toctalian. Maybe while he's doing that, we'll get Mr. Miller to come up here closer so uh, he can be at hand as well. Good afternoon, Mayor Quintero, members of the City Council. During last week's City Council meeting, uh, staff was provided with direction from the City Council regarding the types of projects that the City Council would like um, to put forth for the 2011, fe 2011 federal appropriations process. Uh, based on the direction that was provided last Tuesday evening, uh, the next day the departments were asked to go back and identify a list of projects within their departments that would fit within those parameters. Uh, what we've provided you under Exhibit C of this report is a preliminary proposed list of those projects. The Council is actually being asked today to uh, go over those projects, add, delete, modify in any way um, deemed necessary prior to staff submitting those projects to the offices of Congressman Adam Schiff, Senator Dianne Feinstein, and Senator Barbara Boxer. Uh, Mr. Mike Miller from the Ferguson Group is here in the audience. He's prepared to provide background um, information to the City Council regarding the, the project's probability of success um, in order to assist you in prioritizing these. Uh, following this presentation, Staff uh, hopes to get two, two items uh, taken care of. The first one is we'd like Council to adopt a motion identify, or establishing and prioritizing a list of projects for submission. The second would be to consider adopting a motion um, identifying either a delegate or a number of delegates uh, to participate in an upcoming legislative trip to Washington, D.C. That trip has not yet been scheduled uh, with respect to the date. However, it's likely going to be sometime at the end of February, beginning of March, dependent upon whether Congress, uh, when Congress is in session and the Council members' individual um, schedules. With that, Unless there are any questions. Mr. Drayman and then Ms. Friedman. Um, if Mr. Starbird wanted to, I'm willing to. Uh, oh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, only I thought maybe before you get into this, I've had a couple of you uh, drop by my office asking questions about this process of prioritization, which I think you're anticipating doing. I thought it might be useful uh, to have Mr. Miller uh, give you some insight into the overall funding process, how this thing tends to work. Uh, do we need to have hard and fast priorities? Can we have more general list of projects and then see where they may fit? I thought it might be useful, in as much as you'll be working with Mr. Miller and his firm, to have him spend some time and kind of take you through the process from his perspective in just a couple of minutes. Okay, Ms. Uh, Friedman, you had a... Yeah, uh, first I wanted to thank staff for putting this list together whoa, so whoa, quickly. Whoa, wait a minute. I appreciate that, but I didn't relinquish the floor. I simply ceded my time to Mr. Uh, allowed Mr. Starbert to make his preface. All right, Mr. Draymond, you go first. I'm sorry. Um, my question is for Mr. Miller, and I just want to get right to it, if you don't mind. And I'm sorry, but I, I really want to get to this. I um, I have a great problem uh, taking this list and prioritizing it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And my view is that, that this city council does not need to, you know, decide this child survives, that child doesn't. I don't think we need to go through that process. That's my position. I think there are some categories of, of interest and importance uh, to this city. Um, when we met last time, um, I personally indicated that if I had to make a decision, they would be these five uh, areas. Mr. Miller, is there a reason that we have to put a one, two, three, four, five next to all of these and we can't say these are our areas of priority as a sitting a city and you as our as the, the partner in the the uh, legislative uh, uh, analysts uh, or advocates, advocacies uh, organization that we've now hired uh, to find the pots of money that are available when they're available. Um, and uh, period. 
I mean, is there a reason that we have to decide between the Glendale Fire Regional Training Center and the CNG fueling facility or a regional DNA lab and Stengel ball field? Mr. Question. Mayor, Question mark. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and members of the council, my name is Mike Miller, partner with the Ferguson Group, and I'm pleased to be here today uh, to give you some background. And but first, uh, address uh, your question, uh, Mr. Drayman, and the the answer is. Um, uh, Yes, to a certain extent, we do need some direction regarding this list. Um, however, um, what we're talking about today, um, first and foremost, is the city's agenda for the fiscal year 2011 appropriations legislation, which is starting to move forward. If you choose several projects from this list, uh, as your priorities. That does not mean that uh, we cannot seek funding or technical assistance or favorable administrative consideration for any or all of these um, projects. Uh, and in fact, in my notes uh, as part of the background, that was one of the first points that I absolutely did want to make, that um, first of all, all of these projects identified by your staff uh, uh, are reasonable in terms of the types of project receiving earmarks and the level of funding that is being requested. Uh, again, that's just regarding appropriations. Um, these projects um, uh, also uh, can uh, receive funding or technical assistance or favorable administrative uh, uh, consideration outside of the FY11 appropriations process. We can also, just focusing down on the transportation projects, there are several different types, or at least two uh, vehicles, legislative vehicles available for going after funding for those projects. The first is the uh, transportation appropriations process for FY 2011, and then also the transportation authorization uh, process. And that is the six-year uh, transportation bill that uh, sets policy for the Department of Transportation uh, on the federal level, and it also, that legislation usually includes high priority project, a list of earmarks uh, for specific projects. So just for example, looking at the five projects, um, I, I don't know if you're looking at uh, this particular exhibit that we put together. But um, if you were to look at that, you'll see that the bottom five um, uh, relate to uh, transportation, to the uh, transportation and HUD appropriations bill. You could, for example, give direction to focus in on one or two of those as part of the appropriations process, and then one or two or three of those as part of the transportation authorization process. And in fact, uh, Mr. Schiff, uh, Congressman Schiff, had previously submitted uh, the CNG facility uh, project as a transportation authorization request. So, in fact, that project is under consideration by Congress already as part of the authorization process. Now, I should mention that that process has been delayed. The safety loot legislation expired uh, last year on September 30th. Uh, and there have been a couple of extensions, and now we're extended through, uh, I believe it's September 30th of this year. And a, a lot of folks think that we're probably not looking at passage of that bill until after the November election. So uh, with that caveat, uh, yes, the short answer is we, we can try and secure funding or other favorable consideration for all of the projects on this list and reviewing them. There are none that you know, we, we would just dismiss out of hand as being completely outside the purview of the of, of federal consideration. Is that helpful? It is very helpful. Um, um, I think that that answers my question for the moment. Um, I would like to come back at a, I, when you have take comments. I'd um, let me ask a quick question. You've already broken ground on the CNG fueling facility, haven't we? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is a, a little mistake. I take responsibility. We were getting this in, and I was a little preoccupied last week. If you recall, 
We originally had the transit maintenance, the bus maintenance facility, and the CNG fueling facility as a single project. Right. But as we ran into more questions and issues from budgeting to design of the of the bus maintenance facility, we split it off. Council's already approved the CNG, the main CNG fueling facility, and weather permitting that will be done by next month. While the bus maintenance facility contains a component of CNG fueling specific to the buses, the main project really is the bus maintenance facility, dispatching, bus uh, maintenance, and washing facility. And so this is for another location, or what, what is this? This would be the original location where we had planned to, to build the bus maintenance facility, which is just adjacent to the, uh, the current uh, Glendale Transportation Center over in that area. That's so. I'm sorry. <laughs> We've already approved it. I thought we were building. Well, we haven't approved the bus maintenance facility. We did. You okay. council did yeah. approve the gas yeah. facility. I just in this description we failed to split the two out. This should really be the bus maintenance facility. The, the CNG okay. fueling facility okay. is done. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to breaking ground on it, Ms. Friedman. Okay. Well, I would still like to thank staff for. <laughs> There, we're putting this together so quickly, and I see that we have a number of department heads here as well. I'm sure to provide information if we should need it on various projects. So I want to thank all of you for being here and putting this together. Um, I had a similar question, so you don't have to answer it again. Uh, you did a very good job answering it. So just so that I'm clear and and whoever's watching at home is clear, we're not. If we don't put one of these projects in our high priority or highest priority doesn't mean that we're not still going to be out there trying to get funding. This is just information for you to know if there are sort of projects that are of the utmost importance in case you're asked, I would think, by some of our representatives in Washington. Um, yeah, I know I, you're going to give an introduction and I'm, you're going to handle a lot of this. I'm just going to ask um, two questions for you to maybe cover in your introduction when you when you give us that presentation. The first is, last time we t uh, talked about this, there seemed to be this consensus on the dais that I'm not convinced I heard from you that projects that have regional interest always do better in the funding process. So I'd like you to talk about that. And secondly, I think that your handout answered my question, but I wanted to just be sure that the river bridge would be something that could fit in with the appropriations for transportation okay. yes okay terrific uh, just um, starting off with the question about uh, regional versus more local projects uh, I think the way to look at that is projects that are very local in nature um, just picking one for example uh, the uh, perhaps you, you'd focus in on the Central Library uh, LEAD project. Um, typically, those projects are put forward by members of the House of Representatives, the, the individual member who represents the district in which that type of project is, is located. In the last several years, uh, both of Glendale's Senate delegation members, Senator Feinstein and Senator Boxer, have signaled very directly to municipalities, uh, regional governments, counties, that on the Senate side, they are very interested and projects, well, they're very interested in, in projects that have, a, that have regional significance, regional impact, regional support. Uh, that's not to say that they absolutely will not consider, you know, the more local projects, but to gain a lot of support on, on the Senate side, we really need to demonstrate in most cases that there is regional impact and regional support for projects. Um, so again, it, it relates to which side of, of Congress you're, you're working with. Um, on you know the, the list and prioritizing the list, I should point out that the, the Council absolutely need not prioritize all of these projects that are on this list. You know, we'll take this list, assuming that the council wants us to, and we will look for opportunities, uh, you know, at, throughout the year to secure funding for these projects. For purposes of today, though, what we're looking at is the appropriations process, which starts uh, technically uh, February 5th when our first requests are due in at Senator Feinstein's office, and as part of that appropriations process. We do need to identify, you know, a, a, a number of projects that we want to fill out forms for and have them consider. Typically, we do not provide a list of 10 or 11 or 12 projects to any 
delegation members' offices. Typically, that list is focused, um, particularly on the Senate side. We typically would submit anywhere between three and five projects maximum, I would say. And on the Senate side, they do ask us what our top priority is out of those projects that we submit. Um, what I can do is give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of, of background and perspective on these projects as they relate to the FY11 appropriations process. I can show you where they're likely to fit in in terms of the bill so you can see where you might have a project that would stand alone uh, or where you might have several projects that might be in competition with one another. What I mean by that is if we go in and we ask for uh, a, um, a tra two transportation projects that would possibly target the same uh, a sub account in the Department of Transportation Appropriations Bill, we're likely to be asked which one of those projects is your top priority. Or we're likely to be told, you know, you really need to pick one and only one of those because that's all we can really um, potentially deliver to, to the city. So, you know, as we go through this uh, matrix briefly, you can kind of see where different uh, projects might fit. I also have talked with members of the delegation, their staffers, and have received some good feedback on some projects, and I can share that with you. What I'd like to do is just tell you right off the bat that the projects that, uh, that were viewed favorably in particular were the Regional Training Center, the Video Enforcement, Real-Time Crime Analysis, Law Broadband and DNA Lab, also the Central Library Lead and Brand Library, and then the four transportation projects, River, Walk, Central Avenue, at grade crossing, and then CNG or uh, bus facility. Either one of those um, would most likely receive favorable consideration, at least in terms of the, the House delegation uh, member. and. Uh, much of the emphasis was on um, an interest in um, uh, crime prevention, uh, uh, law enforcement, uh, also um, on transportation. There was an interest in infrastructure projects related to that job creation. Uh, and then also um, uh, with the regional training center, that led into, that also fed into law enforcement or um, uh, emergency preparedness. And then with the Central Library and Brand Library, uh, the um, interest there was to provide uh, for the city things that it might not otherwise be able to fund. What, and this was a staffer's uh, for the congressional? Uh... A very well-placed staffer, yes. Okay. Um, now, what I don't see here, unlike when we were given the list of other cities, uh, what I don't see I don't see one, what I would call a human service project. I don't see anything coming out of community development department or parks for youth programs. Is there a uh, reason for that? That would be a, a question you need to pose to your city staff. This was the uh, right, entire we'll list of projects that we looked at. Okay, I'd like to have that question uh, answered. There's not one project for any human service type of, uh, of funding. Mayor Quintero, the, the projects that you have in front of you were the ones that are readily available after last week's meeting based on the conversations we had. I want to stress again, this is a proposed, just a very preliminary list. We don't have any off-the-shelf projects that, that deal with human services um, or anything of that nature at this point that we could identify. Generally, when we receive funding for these types of projects, uh, they come with a caveat that you have to spend it within a certain amount of time. So what we tried to focus on, preliminarily at least, was to identify projects that we can put into motion as soon as we received funding. Now, if it's the council's desire to go down and identify a human services project, if you have something in mind, um, we can well, absolutely yeah, add that to the list mind. today. I would say that youth uh, employment projects, while they're funded by Department of Labor, and hopefully there will be more money coming down the uh, pike for that, I think youth employment projects, youth uh, gang prevention projects, anything along those lines, I think are very important. And when we looked at the uh, list from the city of Pasadena and numerous other cities. I think Burbank was also, I mean, there were hundreds of thousands of dollars that had been received by uh, by those cities to run what appeared to be some excellent 
youth intervention projects and so forth. So. At Mayor Quintero, we, we certainly can pull that together. We only had a, a short period of time, and these were ready to go. Um, but we do have youth outreach programs, uh, summer youth employment programs that we can actually ask for funding, more funding for. Right. Even though we're getting more funding from the stimulus package, uh, there is more money coming down for summer youth programs. Right. Ms. Frieden. Um, I know. I think that the way that this has played out this time is unusual and hopefully will be unusual or the last time, and it's my hope that in the future we get involved in this further ahead of time and we can work with staff to give more direction so that we can proactively help generate projects rather than just being given a laundry list to pick and choose from. Uh, that said, I will be ready to give input on these projects today when we get to that point. And I think one of the... Uh time, uh, you know, a good time to do it would be after uh, our budget study mm -hmm. sessions. I think that's a good time to also talk about, uh, about these issues. Mr. Starbird, then Mr. Weaver. Well, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, in talking with staff, it has seemed to me the appropriate time to create these lists, both capital and operating programs, is after you've concluded your work on the city's annual budget and you see those programs you'd like to do, maybe you can't justify them out of your current resources, but would like to set them as a high priority for pursuing federal funding, not necessarily in this type of a funding request round, but uh, in any of the work we do with the legislators looking for opportunities either for grants or federal appropriations. And the way to do that would be at the end of your budgeting process, so perfect timing, and then get you well ahead of the curve for the upcoming year. We'll work that in this year. Mr. Weaver. I think that's what I suggested last week that these should come out of the budgetary process. So that's where I heard it. I don't know. I thought uh, of it all by myself. <laughs> I, I'd like to tell you, I, I prioritized 10 of the 17. And maybe in uh, explaining my logic, how I ran, it would lend the conversation. Um, as I said, I've worked with Congress uh, representatives for many years. And there's different pots of money at the Washington level. And you never know which one's going to have uh, additional dollars in it or, that are available. But I looked at two things. Uh, knowing that the federal government has a nice big deficit, it's going to be tight to get money. And congressmen are now trying to uh, salvage their careers after what's been happening in Washington. And they're going to be out there looking for projects and that they can... Uh, show their constituents that they're worthy of being reelected for. Um, then I, knowing that, I said, okay, I'm looking at regional projects, ones that help more than one city, help my city, but help other cities surrounding us, because a regional appropriation is probably going to get greater strength, especially from our state uh, senators, because they can show they're helping more than one community on one appropriation. The other thing I looked at is safety. Uh, as you all know, uh, we're going to be releasing some 6,000 uh, state uh, inmates out in the public again. That's a big safety issue as far as I'm concerned. Um, once regarding transportation, whatever safety related. So I use those two bases for ranking what I did just so you know what I did, I looked at the DNA lab and I made that number one. It's right in the paper again today about trying to speed up, speed up DNA testing. And what, this money will assure that we have up to five years of that lab working, which is greatly going to help uh, uh, government in uh, trials and incarceration or whatever of individuals. So I think that is that's my number one priority. By the way, I did talk to department heads to run by what I thought and what they thought and engage and find out more about these things. Second one I put down is the law enforcement, the broadband communication network. That is of value not just to Glendale, but to the surrounding cities in terms of being able to interact with the different uh, cities on this. And in this time where we're going to have the inmates out there on the streets, a number of them coming to Glendale, to me that's high priority. Uh, third, I put down the crime analysis and information flow. Again, that's a regional thing. It helps to identify where crime is 
going to be permitted or committed, uh, looking at the data that you have, and allow us to take proactive approaches on where to be uh, when crime might happen. I imagine a good number of those criminals getting out of jail will try to go back and get a, an honest job, and they're going to compete against people that are not in prison who can't find jobs. And I'd be willing to bet a number of those criminals will go right back to doing what they've done because that'll be their only source of income. So I did those, and on the fourth, I put the video enforcement security. That's so we have a better feel of comfort where problems are occurring uh, in this city. And uh, it will help us a lot, I think, through the police department to have that. So my top four were all on the safety issue, most of them regionally involved. Then I went to, uh, next one I went to was the ad grade railroad crossings, or my fifth one, because uh, these crossings are all along San Fernando Road, and San Fernando Road is a corridor that impacts Burbank and Los Angeles in addition to Glendale. So regionally, improvements at the railroad crossings in Glendale do impact our surrounding cities. So we can make those quarters safer, it makes sense. Um, six and seven, I went to the I network to uh, the, well, the replacement first. Uh, the final, I didn't put as high. I want to get, it's a big number. If you can get that in, it serves Glendale, but that's a result of the state changing the rules with us on a, on a charter network, et cetera. Uh, See where to go. Six, seven, eight. Uh, the compressed natural gas uh, buses, and nine. I came back to the INET. Now there's there's one in there that uh, I didn't put in, but I did a lot of talking based on what we heard last week, and that's recycled water. I found out that Burbank's system is complete, and we're connected to Burbank but we're not exchanging the waters. Pasadena is a some degree asked Glenn Steiger to come today to make some inquiries and let us know uh, where is Pasadena. I hear Glenn will tell us that they're almost connected. Uh, and we'd have to do a little more. You now have three cities uh, capable of recycling water amongst them. And to expand it, the, as I understand, it's the our water treatment facility right now stumping a lot of water and it needs to be expanded to be able to handle three cities so Los Angeles comes into the picture too because if they have plans and Glenn check with them to find out where they're at so you could put four cities together on a regional network here we're sitting in a desert climate and we're making every effort to use all the recycled water from the four cities. And that would seem to be a very high priority at Washington when we're trying to do what is best for the country in conserving water. And it and it helps all four cities. So my colleagues didn't mind. I'd like Glenn to give an update what he found out because I asked these questions. He didn't have all the answers yesterday. It might help us because we talked about this is just the first list. Glenn, can you fill in any more about Pasadena? Yes. And I'm also interested. I, I can give you a very, I'll give you a brief update. Um, and, uh, Mayor Quintero, members of the uh, Glendale City Council. Uh, Councilman Weaver, you're correct. Um, I have taken our discussion a bit further so that uh, I can round out some of this, uh, some of the details. Uh, we gave a presentation last week to the Council regarding our plans for expanding the recycled water system here in Glendale. That's about a $24 million build out, roughly, plus or minus. And it can be done in phases. I think we, we demonstrated that last week. Uh, I had a, uh, a brief discussion today with uh, my counterpart in Pasadena. And um, we are poised to connect 
our recycled water to Pasadena. It's up to Pasadena to bring their system to, to us right now. Uh, they have uh, made that a priority for this year. So it would appear, and there needs to be more discussion at this point, but preliminarily uh, they are now ready to do what needs to be done to start to build out their system and make the connection to Glendale. So, yes, there is a clearly a, a regional uh, uh, piece to this. On the Los Angeles side, that's a much, much longer, uh, longer term uh, project to expand the water treatment system. So that's not something that would be done anytime in the near future. But it is something that they are aware of, we are aware of, and it will be able to at some point provide additional recycled water, not only to us, but through us to Pasadena and also Burbank. And to clarify, uh, the discussion on our connection with Burbank. We are connected with Burbank, and the connection is there so that if our system goes down, we, we can get water from Burbank and vice versa. So right now it's, uh, we are connected to Burbank. We most likely will be connected with Pasadena within the coming year. So it truly is a regional system. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, it would you, would you like a question on this topic now, or, or yeah, later? just on this topic? Okay. It's, uh, it's Friedman's. So, what what kind of funding, if any, Mr. Steiger, would you be recommending for maintenance, operation, or or new infrastructure, or what is needed? In other words, well, my okay, my, my suggestion at this point would not be to to try to fund the entire build out. My suggestion would be to, to fund a portion of it. Uh, probably in the area of two to three million dollars to get the the system started towards where we want to be, and that's a reasonable amount that we can do and undertake in a very short period of time. Otherwise, it's a much larger project. It's the project that we've proposed is a five-year project. So I would propose, you know, scaling back right now to something more realistic, um, but also including whatever additional dollars, and there won't be much for us, to connect to Pasadena, because we are pretty much already in place. And, and that project is what you uh, presented to us the other evening, uh, those targeted areas within the city? Yes. Like Rancho San Rafael? Yes. So yes, that, that's the full project. Yes. Mr. Starmer, you had a comment? Uh, Glenn, if, if, if Pasadena Connection takes our allocated uh, share, um, how much additional, how much reclaimed water do we have then over above what we're currently using? You mean through our system? Right. We're about 4,000 acre feet, if I recall, that we produce. We use about 1,400. How That's much will they draw? About the same as we're using right now, roughly. So we still have the neighborhood of another 1,000, 1,200 oh, yes. acre feet. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, before I go to Ms. Friedman, I have a, another, you know, similar question. Here we've listed regional DNA laboratory, not from you, Mr. Steiger, but we've listed the regional DNA laboratory. I thought we had received monies. I thought we were, you know, First opening up next week. What is the... Uh, First two years. What's the story on that? Sure, Captain Eady will tell you. Absolutely. Honorable Mayor, members of council and staff, uh, we have, in fact, received uh, past funding for the regional DNA lab. In fact, two cycles. Uh, two years ago, we received a million dollars. Last year, uh, we received an earmark of $500,000. Uh, we are presently embarking on the implementation uh, part of this project. And in doing so, we've been reaching out to other agencies uh, to see who would be willing to partner in this uh, particular project. As, as you may recall, one of the goals of this is for it to be self-sufficient. Uh, so that there is no draw against the uh, the city's funding uh, directly, uh, that it will support itself and that it will serve its purpose for the law enforcement in the region, uh, not just for Glendale, of course. Our immediate partners are Burbank and Glendale. Uh, we've been talking to them. There's a lot of enthusiasm for it. Uh, but it's become clear that the, uh, the possibilities for this lab are really uh, quite endless. And to build out to the level that would be very comfortable, most comfortable for a regional lab, which possibly would include lending services to Los Angeles, uh, would require a little more funding. Now, we can complete the lab with what we have on a smaller scale. Uh, what we want to see uh, is test the feasibility of taking it to the next level and having it truly be a full-to-scale regional lab capable of several thousand uh, samples of analysis each year. Well, if we didn't uh, receive this funding and we just go with what we have, how soon would we be able to uh, 
to open and begin processing samples? I mean, is it six months or? From the time that you actually uh, acquire uh, the flooring space on which to build the lab, you're looking at probably an 18-month window. And uh, much of that is because of the accreditation process that's required for this type of uh, facility. Uh, So it's a very high level of uh, performance and accuracy, of course, when you're dealing with DNA. And it takes about six months from time of operation uh, to receive that accreditation. And do we have a uh, location that we've identified? That uh, We're exploring uh, several possibilities. We have not settled in any one particular. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is because we're looking at trying to identify the level of staffing and uh, production that we want to attain, and that will drive the amount of space that's required because there's a, there's a close uh, relationship between your spatial requirements and your licensing and your approvals for accreditation. Thank you, Captain. Hey, Ms. Friedman. Okay, thanks. Um, well, so many worthy projects, so little money. Um, there's not a project on here that wouldn't be great to have funding for, but um, one thing I didn't see on here, and I know that we're not ready to sort of break ground on it, but I'm wondering if there's funds available for at least research into this area is waste to energy um, for Shoal Canyon which seems to fit in with a lot of the Obama um, agenda. Um, It's environmental, it's energy. We have the space for it, and I think it's something that I'm wondering if you have any thoughts, Mr. Zern, as to... Mr. Mayor, members of the council, council member Friedman, again, I hate to keep going back to this. This was a a kind of a quick turnaround to get some of this information. We've been focusing our waste conversion efforts into the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act area, the stimulus money. So we're fairly well versed in that, where they are and and what options we have available, both in what is R01 and soon to be R02, if if approved, for us to to tap into those funds. We haven't done a lot of research at this point to see what's available through this and haven't had a chance to sit down with Mr. Miller to talk about that, but it's certainly something we have on our list uh, to, to explore. Um, again, right now it seems the stimulus is, is, a, is a potentially uh, fertile ground to try to get some funding for this, but it's very early in the process, so again, we're, we're still new to this and still trying to, to get our feet under us with regards to this whole issue, technology, and so forth. Okay, well, I will ask that you have a conversation at some point with Mr. Miller to see if he has any thoughts of there's anything on on his side absolutely available okay um, so after that I'll give you the the three areas that I was glad to hear um, are, you've heard favorably from and the one that I find the one project that I find to be personally sort of the most exciting of the group um, I'm glad to see safety um, coming out highly I think that's extremely important I would leave it up to police and fire um, to determine what they think their priorities are, but absolutely safety needs to be on that list. I was also happy to see the libraries getting good marks. Um, Doing renovations of both libraries is very important. It's a huge asset for the community and whatever we can do to maintain and and keep those going. And then the one that, that really caught my eye that I think solves, potentially moves towards solving a lot of problems is the Glendale Narrows Riverwalk Bridge which would be a bridge that would connect South Glendale to Griffith Park for pedestrians and bikes. And as most people in the city know, if you're in most of Glendale, certainly in the south part or in the central part, the only way you can get to Griffith Park is really over Los Feliz Boulevard or the back way through Burbank. And uh, having biked both of those ways myself, I wouldn't recommend it. It's a really frightening way to go, and I can't even imagine someone wanting to push a baby carriage down Los Feliz Boulevard, but having an alternative bridge somewhere sort of in the center between the Burbank area and the Los Feliz Boulevard to get safely across without vehicles just by bikes and, and um, pedestrians would link an entire community of 200,000 people with the largest urban park in, in the entire country, of which we are within eyeshot but completely cut off from. So I, to me, that of all of the projects, that's the one that I think um, I find the most exciting. If I could just um, briefly, that particular project um, was precisely the type of project that at least originally uh, was the focus of the Transportation Community and Systems Preservation Program under the Department of Transportation. Um, five or six years ago, only those types of projects where you have communities, Um, being separated by large 
transportation infrastructure or other types of, of impediments that are separating areas of communities or historically co-located or related communities. That's what that was for. What we have seen over the last few years is more and more projects being earmarked in that particular account that are not as clearly TCSP in the original sense, um, but uh, but there still are. So, uh, you know, when you look across and you see on the matrix that um, uh, that we put an X under TCSP, that's one of the better examples on the list of a project that fits precisely within a funding category um, over the last few years, even though that funding category is sort of broadened. Okay, terrific. Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Weaver, you had a quick comment. Yeah, I, Mr. Jerry. Number 10 on my list was the, uh, the river walk. Uh, all the uh, bicycle paths up and down the Los Angeles River, I was the project manager on over the years to see them all built. And one of the problems was getting across uh, the Verduga Wash and everything uh, by Griffith Park. There was none. And this would originally hook us up and give us an entrance into Griffith Park. We could bring it in with the uh, flyover bridge and reorientation of the uh, power plant now. That'd be a good time to try to figure out how to do it. The capacity in the river is there to support uh, peers to build such a bridge. Right. So I it think it'd be great. Clearly wouldn't replace having local parks that are within a couple hundred feet of people's homes, but to at least give access to the most under, the most densely populated area of the city, which is underparked, to a park that is a huge treasure for the entire region, but to which we can't get, I would think you could make a really good argument for it. I, th I think they have a dog park over there, too. <laughs> we don't have one. <laughs> two, two additional quick points. One, I should mention that under the TCSP program, typically there's an 80-20 uh, federal, non-federal cost share requirement. And also that was one of the projects that received uh, favorable, you know, we received favorable feedback uh, from the delegation on. Is, um, is that near the, uh, the power plant where the bridge walk, the narrows, what's it called? The river walk bridge is intended. It, it could be close <clears throat> to that. I think we're still looking at the planning of where that it would yeah. be exactly. You want uh, to is that yeah. something that's even feasible? I mean, do we need Corps of Engineers approval to expand the flood control channel? Uh, I would assume we would, yes. Corps and county. Yes. Um, okay, I have a couple other points. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm not so concerned about the specific priorities that we uh, that we put on these items, and the reason is um, some of our best success uh, that we had maybe two years ago was on the DNA lab when we got the million dollars. I think Ray Eady was, was with us, and Elaine Aguilar was around at that time, and I'm not sure who else who else was there, but we had the DNA lab on our list, but it was way down the list. I mean, it was like number 24 out of 25 projects. Um, it didn't matter that it was number 24. It was something that uh, Congressman Schiff had an interest in, and he zeroed right into it and uh, and made that you know, de facto our, our number one priority. And, of course, when you're there, you're not going to say, no, 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 no. We, you know, we don't want that DNA lab. We have other things that are more important. You say, oh, you like the DNA? Oh, that's very important for our, our community. You, see, you know, sort of go with the flow. You see that he's expressed an interest in the project, and um, you want to go with that. You want to support him and and let him know that, that yes, um, that we're behind it. Uh, we were behind it as a city. It just wasn't ranked at that point from number one to ten. It was it was down the list. So the exact uh, ranking and prioritization that we give these is not a, a huge a problem for me. But I think the things that I'm you know, in general and in no specific order. I do like the video enforcement um, because. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that entails, but it sounds very uh, technologically advanced. I'm not sure if that's the monitoring that we that we had discussed earlier at some point. Uh, it frees up our police 
the force, uh, the real-time crime analysis, the uh, broadband, the DNA lab, since we've already got a nice chunk of money, I think um, it's, it's already a proven product. Uh, the at-grade crossing, I think, is a very worthy project. I think it will get uh, regional support because the the rail corridor that we have there serves the entire state. It's a north-south corridor. A, um, a preventable accident or, or an accident there uh, could tie up uh, Amtrak service, Metrolink service, all the freight service up and down the corridor. So in terms of selling that to our senators, uh, I think it's a great sell, especially when they're interested in reducing air pollution, getting people out of their cars. We want to keep the rails more, uh, the rail system more reliable, as well as putting the freight traffic, the freight containers on the freight trains and get them off our highways as well. So I think the at-grade crossings, um, aside from bringing safety uh, to the local level, preventing our residents from getting stuck on a, a crossing. I think that may have some uh, good possibilities. Um, as far as the stimulus money that may be out there, I think we need to, I support the waste to energy, but um, I don't think they're giving money for research or uh, any sort of technical analysis. It's what they call the old shovel-ready projects. Uh, the stimulus is intended mainly to create jobs, and I don't think they mean jobs in the laboratory or jobs uh, in an office with someone trying to figure out what the best manner of uh, developing a uh, piece of machinery is. They want the shovels in the ground. They want the public works crews. They want the independent uh, contractors um, out there digging up. So, again, we need to have as many, although not directly related to our appropriations requests. We need to have all our public works projects. I know you're working on it, Steve. We need a, we need a wide laundry list of, of items that we can jump in on. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing that I, as I was reading some of the other cities, I think last time around, uh, Adam Schiff got some money for the city of Alhambra and their uh, emergency operations center, if I'm not mistaken. Did I read that correctly? Alhambra's EOC. And not to mock Alhambra, but, I mean, the, the nature and the degree of the crises that we have had in the last six months alone um, surely warrant a, uh, perhaps an investment in emergency operations. It is, in, in uh, large regard, a regional effort. We're coordinating, as we know. I mean, that EOC was was dead uh, for two years. There were mothballs in there, spiders crawling up the walls. And uh, as soon as Mr. Quintero became mayor, the heavens broke loose with fires and rains. But the point is that it's a critical brain center for... for I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, he did not bring the apocalypse to Glendale. Yeah. But, um, I mean, if you've been in there and you see all the departments that are working, a lot of times they're just standing with a clipboard trying to determine, you know, whether it's uh, public work. And it's, it's really an amazing uh, choreography that goes on there. But everyone's cramped. The facility is outdated at best. Um, it's a situation that most of the country is aware of. They were aware of the station fires and the huge devastation world, uh, aware of the huge flooding, uh, the disaster that we have averted and avoided in large respect due to the great planning and the on-the-job uh, real-time maneuvering that we were doing. I think we'd make a, a good pitch for an, an upgraded EOC or something that that we can use these disasters in our region to sell. And um, any particular representative would be hard-pressed to deny uh, supporting especially our senators would be in favor of it, uh, I would presume. So I don't think we have, I don't know if we have a project. Uh, it's something that has just sort of come, come to the forefront of our attention as we were on storm watch and fire watch in the last four or five months. If we could put something together there, I think that would be an interesting uh, 
project that we could maybe pitch. I'm not sure which uh, department, maybe FEMA uh, in the FEMA area, but I would leave that up to our uh, our uh, advocate to direct us in the right way. I think it's a very sellable, uh, very sellable area. Um, other than that, I like everything else, but you know the the four or five that I mentioned, I think would be uh, uh, would be at the top of my list. But again, you throw the list out. You just give this to them, and whatever catches their fancy, you go with. So. That's Mr. Draymond. That's my point. Um, well, let's see. <clears throat> Let me start with um, where Mr. Najarian left off, the EOC. I, it's the only thing we didn't have, I think, were locusts. Uh, <laughs> that'll be in the spring. <laughs> that'll Mr. be in the Draymond. spring. <laughs> uh, and it, it does point out the need for, or the, the, val the uh, value of, of such a facility, it uh, I haven't I don't see it here. So, uh, just as you point out, Mr. Najarian, it is not a project ready to go. Just like the the uh, the idea of waste to energy is not ready to go at the moment, uh, and some of the other issues that have, uh, topics that have been raised, like human service issues, uh, youth outreach, uh, and so forth. Um, however, even if we don't. We need to. We. It brings me to to the first point I wanted to get to, which is, why not? I know it's a short a short window of time that we we have had and we've given back to staff to say, come on, give us some recommendations here. But you know, part of how you judge a city is uh, also the priorities that the city sets for <clears throat> itself, and um, we. I think we need to be looking at some uh, youth outreach programs, youth employment programs, some of the things that Mr. Uh, Mayor uh, Quintero was talking about when he was making his remarks before, like the EOC, like the waste to energy, and so on. Um, so that even if that isn't on the short list when we go, um, or the short list that we put in Mr. Miller's hand, uh, it becomes a uh, on the slightly longer list throughout the year. Um, Mr. Starbird, when we were speaking earlier today and I was asking you some questions about all of this, we were talking about the, uh, we were talking about uh, ISIS and some of those things and how, you know, the, that originally did not, those, those topics didn't originate at meetings with uh, a federal lobbyist uh, or presentations with federal lobbyists. They began with our departments. Uh, uh, creating those uh, topics and working on them and trying to find funding and so on. So I think those are more comprehensively uh, issues we should be looking at. Um, as to priorities for this time around, um, I also agree that the Glendale Narrows uh, project is a great one. Um, again, the same, uh, just being slightly repetitive, but the, the issue that we have such a densely uh, populated area of the city, we are underparked, and here is the largest uh, uh, the central park, if you will, in the region. And when I say region, I mean large region, uh, not just our immediate tri-city area, and, and we have no direct, safe access to it that is not by automobile. So I think that is, that is uh, uh, a particularly... Um, nice one to pursue. I think the um, also on the library side, uh, I like both of those projects. I think if they can be somehow combined or looked at, uh, the Brand Library Historic Preservation and the Central Library uh, implementation. I Of the two, I like the Brand Library Historic Preservation better. And um, just to illustrate why, I'd like to ask if, if uh, Cindy Cleary could come up for a moment. I have a question for her. Hi, thanks for Hi. being here. Sure. Um, if you took the Glendale Burbank Pasadena region and you took the Brand Library aside and it just went away, where would the most comprehensive uh, arts and music library be in the region? 
Well, I've always said that it is the premier center in the San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley as well. Yeah. So I think we play a critical role in, in the arts. Um, we wouldn't have one is basically the answer. Uh, it, is, it, <laughs> is, it is the, it is the uh, uh, arts and music uh, cultural uh, library for the region. And so uh, if you want to talk regionality alone, there you go. It's also a historic site that is the, the home of the the modern founder, if you will, of our city, and and uh, and it's been limping along. So um, the historic preservation is important because it also deals with the efficiency of the of the site itself. Um, thank you. I know there's a long way to walk for that, but I wanted to point that out. So that would be on my list. Um, the uh, the Glendale Fire Regional Training Center, I think, is important, and I also think the Regional DNA Laboratory is important um, because of the very reasons Mr. Najarian mentions. They are, uh, I mean, particularly the Regional DNA Lab, uh, we're already underway, if you will, uh, so the, the rationale for funding seems to be there. Um, also, the uh, at-grade... Uh, crossing, I think you'd, you'd have to be, as a representative of this area, you'd have to be have living in a cave somewhere not to know uh, the history of this transit corridor with regard to train and the upheaval within the community about it. So um, we have some work to do there, and, and we don't have the, the funding to do it. So those would be my uh, preferred topics with the uh, or project areas with the addition of one more. It's the one that Mr. Weaver raised the other day uh, and Mr. Um, Steiger was talking about a moment ago and that relates to a regional uh, recycled water project. I think that is important and uh, maybe the kind of funding we're talking about is not a, for the comprehensive uh, uh, installation or completion of an entire city, uh, I mean system, but rather um, uh, providing what we need to connect to our eastern neighbor, easterly neighbor, and to get us started to providing this water that uh, uh, literally affects the quality of life of our, our residents. Uh, it's money out of their pockets uh, to, to irrigate uh, these large, large sections of our, uh, of our city, many of which are uh, homeowner areas. So. Those are mine. Okay. Well, as we go through these things throughout the years, I'm all you know, some things in government never change, you know. And uh, when you're a young kid in the military and you finish your training, they give you what used to be called a, a dream sheet. <laughs> and so <laughs> Weaver is laughing, right? Well, I got Hawaii. You know, good for you because everyone in my flip or everyone in my, you know, we basically chose, I chose Road to Spain. Some people chose Pendleton. They'd never been to, others chose Hawaii, the Marine Barracks at uh, Hawaii. We all wound up in either North Carolina, <laughs> Camp Lejeune, or uh, Quantico, Virginia. Thank God I got Quantico. That was a little higher up than uh, the North Carolina bases. But uh, anyway, you have to dream. So uh, my uh, first choice, above all else, if I had to, uh, if I had to choose just one, it would be the uh, Glendale Narrows River Walk. I think that is so important to the quality of life in uh, South Glendale. I think any pedestrian. Uh, bridge across that freeway or under the freeway, however they engineer it, but um, any pedestrian bridge that uh, connects south and central Glendale to um, the park, what is in fact the largest urban park in the United States, I think that would just be a tremendous, tremendous uh, coup for all of the uh, residents, whether they ride bikes or walk, families, Whoever, that would just be because there is no other option but um, 
but Los Feliz from the southern region of town. And if you think about what it's like to drive down, just driving alone, never mind bicycles, just driving across Los Feliz, it's just... Uh, then the other side is obviously near Burbank. So that would be my first choice. Then uh, second choice is really to expand on that waste to energy and see what what is out there. I think that is very important for us. We've taken the first steps when we... Um, uh, bought the natural gas contract, et cetera, et cetera. So I really want to have our um, Mr. Miller push the uh, waste to energy, uh, see what see what's out there. And um, then I'm pretty much right down the line with everyone else. I think the regional DNA is very important. Uh, the video enforcement and security project, very important. Um, recycled water. The same way, just like waste energy, I think we have to really focus to see if there's something uh, available for us there. And then finally, um, Brand Library is very important to me. I think the idea of, of finishing that project as soon as possible, I think that's also a regional draw. It's more than, uh, it's more than something for the uh, city of Glendale. And the CNG fueling uh, facilities, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that we will have tanks in the ground and we'll be, we'll be using that <coughs> CNG facility, but whatever we can do to round it, uh, to round it out. And then without question, human resource, or rather human services projects, we need to, we need to find out. We need to quickly contact the uh, job center working through community development. It's all coordinated now our parks programs, our youth programs, and see what's out there for gang intervention and uh, some of the releases of prisoners that have been talked about. I'm sure they're going to include uh, cutbacks in the California Youth Authority and the CYA. And so maybe there's, um, because in fact those youth go up into their 20s that are incarcerated in that uh, side of the house. Uh, maybe there's some programs there, but I do think we need to to work on our human services uh, funding. So that's my dream uh, sheet. And uh, anyway, I'm really very impressed with you, Mr. Miller, the way you've analyzed uh, our objectives, the uh, chart that you've uh, prepared. I'm very happy to have you on board, and I think you're going to do a great, uh, a great job for us. Okay, what else do we have to Mr. Weaver? No. Is it better be giving you direction today, or, or one of these motions, or what? Mr. Well, Miller, I was have what you, need you, you, you have what you need at this point. Oh, no, it's. I, I think that based on the, pardon me, um, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, uh, I think that we have a good indication in terms of some of the specific projects that. Um, uh, many of the council members are, are focused in on. Um, we also have um, a number of broad areas that you folks want us to, you know, look at, uh, not just for appropriations, but throughout the year, whenever we find opportunities, be it in stimulus or working with, for example, <coughs> the local and regional offices of administrative agencies like HHS and DOJ. That's something else that we will work with you and your staff to do because there is discretionary funding available in many programs, and it's at the discretion not in Washington, D.C., but here in California and here in Los Angeles, uh, so uh, in the Los Angeles area. So perhaps one thing that we could do uh, is go back, sharpen our pencils on, on this list, and provide you very quickly with, for purposes again, of hitting the, the, the February 5th deadline for Senator Feinstein, a list of projects that... Um, where, where the city stands a good chance of success that covers your um, priorities and matches up with, uh, with the priorities of, of those members. Could, could I do that where I could take this back and, and give you a, a sort of a fine-tuned list very, very quickly? Would it be by category? It's not necessarily by priority. Just here are the ones we think will fit in the different appropriation categories. I, I can do it that way. Um, I, I think what I'll what I will do though is I'll need to identify specific projects. Just just give you a couple of examples. Um, on on I'll, I'll just choose one um, 
for example, uh, the Brand Library. Um, it's my understanding that that project focuses in on uh, construction or renovation as, a, as opposed to programs. Um, a couple of, one of the categories that we've identified um, does not fund that type of, uh, of activity. It, it funds programs, uh, you know, personnel, but not actual bricks and mortar. Um, however, uh, there is an account, the Economic Development Initiative account, which does fund bricks and mortar type construction. The problem with that account is that it is highly competitive. Some estimates have that you know, for every one project that is funded, 10, 20, 30, it depends on who you speak with, requests are made for those funds. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll need to look at, you know, that factor as well, uh, you know, the likelihood of success. And, you know, I can report that to you. There, there were a couple that, you know, didn't really show up on the priority list for purposes of FY11. And so we'll focus in on those that did and, and give you a, a revised report. Mr. Drain and then Mr. Starbird. Okay. I, I see the, the uh, um, management folk or looming, huddling, lurking, huddling. looming, huddling. So um, I just, what I was going to say, Mr. Miller, is that as I was listening, there were specific topics that had some consensus from this council. And I have a feeling that's what Mr. Right. Tepitalian we, we, was we, Staff was saying. keeping track. Because I, yeah. I saw John keeping, going to keep score over there. Right. And uh, I have a habit of doing that, too, over here. Um, would you mind, uh, Mr. Tuktayan, because mm -hmm. I think it would help clarify. We've heard a lot of general discussion and more specific topics. And I might add, I'm a little concerned getting a little list back and still getting things in time for February 5th. This is the, the 26th, so time is running. Just to go over the items that we've uh, heard general consensus on, there's eight of them, um, and not in any particular order at this point. We can go back and actually identify who ranked what in which order. But the eight main ones were waste to energy research, or just waste to energy as a topic, youth outreach and employment type programs, uh, regional DNA lab, brand library, uh, video enforcement and security projects, recycled water, accurate rail crossing upgrades, and the Glendale Narrows Bridge, which is the Riverwalk project. So that's all you would bring back? Those are the no. Uh, those are the eight main ones that the majority of the council had consensus on. Those are the the main eight that we'll put forward as our top priorities. But as Mr. Miller indicated, we'll we'll have the full list for our congressional leaders to review as well. Mr. Mayor, those are exactly the ones that I saw had at least three uh, council members uh, talking about on each of those same ones. Okay. Any other comments? Do you feel you need a motion, or I think we're well, not on that? I think the staff has direction, but you have the delegates. If you're in concurrence with with uh, the way John has described it, then uh, then we have direction. Uh, the last item is the uh, is a council delegate for a trip to Washington. And the trip, trip would take place when? Uh, Mayor Quintero, that that trip has not been scheduled yet. As I indicated earlier, it'll likely be sometime late February to early March. Uh, it's going to be t dependent upon the selected council members' um, schedules, as well as uh, trying to tie in with when Congress is actually in session. So we go out there and meet with one of the leaders. Amen. Just a question: um, How many people do we generally send? In the past, that's generally been one person, and historically, as far as I'm, I can recall, that was the mayor. Um, however, if the mayor couldn't go, the, it, it's kind of just been decided amongst council members who that delegate would be. Any reason there can't be more than one? Any reason there couldn't be two if there was interest? No, if there's interest <laughs> on the behalf of the council. Before. Done two before. We've done none before. <laughs> two as well. We have so. done none. That's right. Up to two. Well, if I go, I would want to uh, have someone go with me, so to speak. There's usually a delegation with staff members, and of course, I know, I'm aware of that, but I mean another council, council member. member. Anybody in particular you wanted to punish? Or? <laughs> I don't know if I'm going. Um, do we have to decide that now, or not really? Well, we want to begin to plan. So, I mean, we can confer with you later, we can bring it back later, but uh, staff wants to begin to plan a date. Right, well, why don't we come up with a date first? And then we'll see who uh, will be interested in going. Mr. Jerry? I'm, I'm going to be there for several weeks, uh, end of February, early March, on 
someone else's dime. So if you have meetings set up, um, is there a problem with – is there a Brown Act issue if there's three of us? Well, if there's three, to visit your legislators, no, as long as you follow the strictures of the Brown Act, which is essentially you don't discuss amongst yourselves items that are specifically a business that will come before you, you can have three. So just – and as you work on a date, um, just keep me apprised so that maybe I can swing it into one of my other trips as well. Mr. Starber. That uh, raises an interesting question that has come from – couple of you and that is when when you're back in Washington on for other purposes you have the airport commission they are at times back in Washington uh, are on rail work I know Laura has a, a possible trip on behalf of the MWD I think um, the opportunity to to while you're back to run other business uh, promote the city's projects and whether or not that's a good thing is are there limitations on what we should be doing um, uh, how should we be handling those? Typically, that's a that's a very good idea. What we like to do is whenever a, a member of the council is back in Washington, even if it's not part of the uh, sort of official lobbying trip, um, which, by the way, I, I would like to emphasize that that is a very important part of of the the overall uh, federal agenda, the effort you know to push that forward. Um, you know, we do have some clients who do not make the trip. Most of our clients do, and we over the years have found that it's much more successful on average if we do have the elected to elected official uh, communication and direct contact. Um, it's also important uh, to go back and, and talk with the D.C. Uh, staff. Um, local staff for the congressional delegation is very important to this process. But it's also important that the folks in D.C. who might not ever come out, uh, you know, might not ever have an opportunity to come out and meet you folks um, face to face or at least uh, a delegation. In terms of dates, um, the in the month of February, Congress is out of session the 15th through the 19th, and then they are back in session essentially through uh, March 29th when they go on. Uh, a two-week uh, a two-week recess. Uh, the National League of Cities and the um, National Association of Counties (NACO) and NLC typically, and I believe this year once again, are holding their um, uh, meetings in early March, the week of March first uh, and the week of March eighth, I believe. Sometimes there's uh, a benefit to going back uh, and and doing those meetings. Other times we do find that. Those particular two weeks are very busy. Sometimes it's hard to get meetings, and sometimes you're part of a large crowd. So that's just one consideration. Yeah, I don't know, but I would think that during the League of Cities, there's just so many local yeah. elected officials there. Better to do it during another. I, and time. I agree with that. I do. Um, but again, just going back to uh, the, the city manager's comment, Whenever you folks are available back in Washington, D.C., we want to take advantage of that. And it might just be a you know, single meeting or it might be a series of meetings and it might be on one particular issue where we're having a little bit of a problem or you know, an effort to put something over the top, um, but we want to take advantage of that. Okay. Well, so I think the best bet is to try to schedule something, schedule a date. And then we'll see. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get with you first, Mr. Mayor, and, and pick a date, and then others who may want to go can go along. I think it, I think the, the, we frankly have wondered whether the individual trips and other business where you can raise some of our issues, is that beneficial or not? So I'm glad to hear this feedback from Mr. Miller. I think whenever you are all back there, whenever any of you is back there, if there's an opportunity to coordinate with Mr. Miller, and then we can, we can reinforce what uh, our representatives here on our, on our lobbying trip at other times. That frankly, when you're not back there in the melee of the National League of Cities may be more effective. I find in Sacramento, the time you don't want to visit your legislators when the League is having its annual conference because they just don't have time for you. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No, nope, that's all. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.